So Latour. So what I'd suggest is we actually start at the end, where he kind of summarizes his arguments, and then if, ne if necessary, we can go back. Uh, so let me start with you know, just a couple of sentences, which are actually at the very end of the article, where I think he kind of, uh, because of course I'm more interested in his arguments about utilization, and for me, like his arguments about the social and the tariff diverse and Durkheim are very important, but ultimately I'm being selfish just because we need to right? So mm -hmm. we'll get there as well. Okay, so the point is that the whole, right? The point is that the whole right? has lost its privileged status. We can produce out the same data points with many aggregates as we see fit while reverting back at any time to individual components. Well, so first of all, let's make sure we understand what he's talking about, right? So would somebody try to, you know, again, you could refer to everything we did like in class, right, to did yesterday and today, because that's all we've been doing, but maybe somebody can just say, okay, so what, I mean, what, is, what does he mean by producing out the same data points as many aggregates as we see feed? I mean, what is he talking about? What we did, I think, right? I think, I, mean, I, mean, I think so. I, I don't know, maybe we're something else, but I think. Multi dimension information to increase um, uh, detail about the subject by using aggregates. No? Well, I mean, he doesn't talk precisely, but he never mentions multi dimensional state. I mean, he doesn't get into detail. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, the way I interpret this is, I mean, maybe what he's talking about is like. Yes. Kind of like things like this, right? You basically, like for example, right, you, I mean, you, okay, you can't really do it here, but you can do it, for example, in a cell, right? Where you can say, okay, now I'm looking at these dimensions, and now I'm looking, for example, at these dimensions. Uh, but you basically, but basically, what you can say is a particular pattern, right? Which is formed by points. That's probably what he means. You can say that's what he means by aggregate. Mm -hmm. And the idea of aggregate is kind of something provisional or temporary, because at any point you can, you know, you can basically change the dimensions. And of course, you can also do other things. For example, we haven't done it, but you can also zoom in, right? Mm -hmm. Zoom in, uh, etc. Uh, so I hope that's what he means. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, now the second part, right? While reverting back at the same time to the individual components, right? So what is what? What do you think this means? Well, Data is changed by aggregates. Uh, I mean, I can tell you what it means for me, but you know, like maybe I'm just being very naive. For me, it simply means that if I go make one of these, one of these graphs, right? Mm -hmm. okay. I can basically kind of, I can just simply go like this, right? I can kind of find out what this data point is, mm -hmm. and then I can, right? For example, I can write, and I can also do this. I can say, okay, here's my. You know, it's kind of what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, you can say, okay, well, you know, what I'm seeing is just a data point, but right, if I click on this data point, I can basically you know, find out exactly, right, everything else I know about it. It's I mean, I don't know, I mean, well, but, but, but see, but the difficulty is that, I mean, you were able, if you look at any bar chart from that century, right, I mean, you could do it already. So, and the thing is, he kind of repeats it a few times in the article, so I have a feeling that it's really important to him, mm -hmm. but I really wonder what he means. Earlier in the article, he talked about <coughs> um, the the lines of imitation. Yes. Which I thought was important, and it seemed to be as if he was emphasizing that that line, which you might consider an individual, like an individual manga artist. That's right has a point, but he also has a line, mm -hmm. which is in time, which is right. his e evolution as an artist. Mm -hmm. And he seems to be saying that it's very important because that's your now your new bedrock. It, when you go to the system, that's what you have to go back and stand on when you make the big assumptions based on aggregate data. You have to be able to get back to that. That's but so to get back to to the individual, to the individual right. manga right. artist, or the individual subject in a right. good right. social group, right. and when you get to that point, then right. it's all descriptive. Yeah. It's exactly what we're used yeah. to doing in the in the humanities. I mean, I think I mean I, I, again, I can I can because I kind of like using Mondrian to talk about it. 
So here, what I think you may also mean, right? Let's say, let's say here's, I mean, well, maybe it's not a very good example. I think, I mean, I think best example would be, actually, best example would be maybe something like this, right? Uh, this one, right? So just a second. Uh, I think it's working. I'm not working. It's working. But go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I think the idea also becomes like a moment that then the, the individual that gave it, when you have inherited, whenever you give the example, this unit was very clear that the, from the, the two or three things that were related, that cross referencing became the self component. Mm -hmm. And then you can relate back into the components to it. And the capacity that you have to both calibrate the individual component uh, and continuously compare it to this new piece of information that it's new uh -huh. and offers you new So you think the component is maybe, maybe component is actually like a special dimension of the data point? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're I, mean, I, I, kind of, I mean, I think from reading this article, I get the feeling that he means by component that she says like this individual, which is the which is being tracked. It's like the, yeah, it's like the initial one, but it's also the idea that you only really saw the comparison. Since the comparison is against the background that it's informative, it, imme it is immediately cross-referencing and creating possibility for generation of new content. So it is a new component. And so it continues to cross-reference with the thing that gave it origin. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the visual graph that we got is now a component that has a particular assumption or statement that you cross-reference with the initial type that actually made it. I mean, I think because because I think all this interactive software, right, it allows you to do it so easily. Like it doesn't to me like it doesn't seem to be like why why is such a big deal? That's why that's why I'm puzzled, right? I mean, I, th I think it's exactly well, we already covered it this morning because I think it's one of those. The, when we're talking about your terminology and talking about the 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 all possible images, I think there's a, a fungibility of terms that happens within the dimensional context that becomes really problematic when you start uh, a, applying a term like the whole, and, uh, you know, as a as a general useful term uh, in life, and and then trying to to deal with how it's changed in a dimensional environment used specifically for analysis and interpretation, and especially when it's dealing with numbers and uh, the possibilities of, of being able to, to invert, do things that, that anyone can do in a dimensional, uh, like a Photoshop or any other kind of visualization program of turning things inside out with them backwards and forwards, um, of dealing with particles of data, uh, and then basically pixelating all your information at any time, uh, those make those kind of literary terms very difficult to, to translate in that kind of fluid context. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that that can be very confusing, you know, for when it's tried to, when you try to reapply it into the original field. I mean, I think, I think, I think what I'm also thinking, right, I think you're right, but what I'm also thinking, like, if you look at the sentence, I mean, I think he's actually talking about what we're doing now, right, okay, we, right. we try one visualization technique, and we try another technique, yeah. and you kind of, you know, you, you use different software to actually provide different assemblages. Uh, I mean, of course, what he kind of doesn't really go into discussing, to what extent is assemblages are as much result of software using as the actual data, uh, but that's maybe, you know, but I think he probably feels like, just like me, right? He doesn't want to talk about this maybe problematic parts because he just wants to kind of, uh, kind of he, well, he wants to kind of yeah. social scientists to do it. Yeah. But now let's ask, let's go to the next part. Let's ask you know the crucial question. But later, what, when after that we we'll go back to his arguments about natural science versus social science. Okay, so he kind of jumps to right. He makes this very very big statement that the whole lost right, the whole of lost its privileged status. Because of this capacity, right, using this interactive visualization and perhaps other techniques, right, to make right variety of different let's say, aggregates right, out of data points, and then go back to let's say, uh, particular dimensions of the data points and make new aggregates. So okay, so he thinks that this means that the whole lost its Kind of right, lost its uh, image status. Well, it sounds almost too good to be true, right? So what do you think about it? 
what do we do with that? That's too good. Yeah. Please. So I mean, it's uh, it's just that he foresaw uh, he foresaw this type of visualization of data that that they didn't manage to to have at the time. I mean, um, just can I just backtrack please, a little? Please, please, please. When it, on page four, it says, um, you know, um, let's see. Instead of decreasing as might be expected following an introductory class in the method methodology of the social sciences, you know, they'll they'll say gather more examples, forget individual traits, see things from far away from above in bulk, not in detail, for goodness sake, put it into frame. According to Tart, from those well-meaning pieces of advice, only disorientation can ensue. And this is all about looking at data, but um, like uh, the social science, uh, sciences, what they're trying to say is just forget the individual traits, so then you never see the outliers. I mean, I think it's kind of important that we do see the data that goes away, you know? And now with this new kind of, with this way of visualizing data, we can actually see the outliers, but also go back and see the aggregate as well. You know what I mean? I mean, is that, you yes, know, well, so well. that's just the power yeah. of, of data. Yeah. He, you know, but, uh, and then it says that he was cornered into dead-end discussions about micro versus macro, the individualistic versus the holistic, that everyone was um, saying that it was more scientific to look at data in terms of just following the whole group as a sociologist might, as opposed to just, um, just giving more credit to each individual and being able to follow them at the same time. So it's one and the whole as opposed to just the whole aggregate, you know? Kind of going on what you said, mm -hmm. uh, basically you said it's reconciling the actor and the system um, by desire and belief, the possession of each other. So I see a symbiotic relation. So he's talking more about the process rather than and he's complaining, not complaining, but he's, um, yeah, complaining about the fact that there's too many, the, the polar opposites of the social versus the science, science. the analysis of it is too binary, and it's really a symbi symbiotic process where, again, like she said, it's a recursive. Um, so through the patterns, we go back to the actor, but we also see the system as a whole, and then we can also predict future um, possibilities. And we can't grasp the whole thing, but we can grasp the process and actually visually see the phenomenolo phenomenological movement of the process from which we can see the, the future possibilities. And that's as close as we can come to understanding the system in relation to the whole, the actor in relation to the system. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I asked you, because I was want, I wanted to know with regard to the creativity end, like how mm -hmm. can we predict genius? And um, there's a creativity theorist, um, Dean Simonton, I don't know if anyone's heard of him, and he talks about the Darwin evolution um, theory as applied to the creative genius, mm -hmm. as the creative genius, what makes him different from the creative, regular creative, you know, small C versus the big C is that the creative genius is able to produce many ideas, many variations of ideas and mm -hmm. possibilities. And through that, the possibility of those pattern, pattern or possibility of those variabilities, um, something good will come out of it. The more you produce, the more you can. Well, it's just true when you think about those people, you don't just write one novel and make one simple. Right? Yeah. You just keep like doing it, and some of it is even better, right? Please. I just have them looking at one passage on Derrida and totality. It's here. Um, somewhere else. No, somewhere else. Okay, but it might, it might relate because we're talking about totality. I'm sure. Derrida writes of an end to totalization, an end to the concept that we can contain the entire sensuous manifold in our conceptual frameworks or structures. Quote. If totalization no longer has any meaning, it is not because the infiniteness of a field cannot be covered by a finite glance or a finite discourse, but because the nature of the field, that is, language and a finite language, excludes totalization. Because, you know, of course, we, we can understand this last statement, this close on depth, this whole argument, and you already done a very good job, but let's just make sure we're on the same page. So let's kind of go back, right, to like, the body of his article, and let me ask you this question, right? So he makes an argument about, so what are arguments he makes about natural sciences and social sciences, right? What does he say about them in the article? Yes. He bases it on scale. That is, mm -hmm. uh, what's what's the ratio between us, our scale of living, and the object of the science? So astronomy way away, microbiology way way small, mm -hmm. sociology 
right in your face. I mean, you, right. you no, are. No, it's hard. Yeah. People are. You basically have to. And what he also says in another book, he published a book called Tarty, which has a new play. And he said, well, it's so strange we use numbers to talk about people because we can actually understand what's inside them because we're like that. You know, we can understand, we can understand guess what it was because we're aliens. Okay. Uh, well, what about what about what, what, okay? Anything else? Uh, I mean, what about? I mean, I think also the argument is kind of here, right? So I think it is. I think you're right about the scale, but I think it, but I think the scale to me doesn't simply mean micro or macro. It also means the size. Right? So what he says here is basically the natural sciences, right? Look at the objects from far away with this kind of zoom, with this kind of right, kind of Google Earth view, so to speak. Because they have to. Because there are so many of them. Okay. So they have, well, they have, you know, some kind of, I mean, some kind of, right, very huge number of molecules, a very huge number of right, cells, and the idea is that, well, now we'll come back to it because I'm actually going to suggest that in fact changing, but let's say at least in the 19th century, when sociology emerges, and in fact social sciences emerges, and there are these debates, well, you know, do the social sciences have to emulate natural sciences, or do we have our own path, right? Because we talk about human beings and we have to develop hermeneutics and, and introspection, or do, uh, is the social science like a social <coughs> um, So, at least in the 19th century, I mean, I think he's absolutely right that you know you have so many elements and you possibly can't track, right? You can't track, you can't follow every single molecule of gas, right? Every single cell. And that's why, at least in the 19th century, and that's why he says that the science is kind of justified in using what he calls, right, what he calls models, laws, and systems, right? It's therefore quite normal that we should rely on the rough outline with societies of gas and cells to make our observation. Right? So now we can say what are these outlines? Well, I mean, think about, for example, contemporary physics, which is really based on probabilistic models, right? Uh, and in fact, the statistical analysis, you know, right, I mean, was invented, well, it was actually invented in the context of the uh, demographics, but it becomes the foundation, and it's used in all the sciences. Uh, and, you know, I guess you have, you have our system, of, you know, in different sciences you have different equations, but the idea is that, right, the classical science was about laws, and then uh, later it becomes about probabilities, and, and say maybe about uh, different type of models. And the idea is that what we're interested in is not in the behavior of every single individual molecule of gas or every single cell, we're interested in general principles, right? Uh, and, um, and I think what he says here, right, what he says here, well, you know, uh, maybe not in this particular what he said, right? I think what he says, I mean, I mean in the article, maybe later, so the social scientists, such as Durkheim, right, try to create this new enterprise of sociology, we said we have to emulate, so we have to emulate natural sciences to be scientific. Natural sciences deal with the kind of models, the structures, right, the patterns. And that's why Durkheim, first book, he basically talks about suicide, he talks about suicide statistics, right? So something as individual suicide turns out to be, according to Durkheim, follow some general patterns. So he's basically trying to emulate right, the natural sciences by looking at the humans from a distance, and you know, that basically becomes all about histograms, right? It becomes about aggregation of data, what we discussed also earlier. So when you think about histogram, to me this is you know, right, this is a very kind of typical device where you summarize the data. But we now collapse lots of data points into one graph. Right? That's basically that's basically what the histogram is. Right? So histogram, I think, is, is a very, very good example. Or for example, you know, when you when you fit your data of Gaussian distribution or types of distributions. Uh, yes. Just to note, that's exactly what we did in your in your examples. We used a lot of statistical methodology that would be very at home. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So it seems to me like there's a little uh, difference between TARD's objective, which was not to be like natural science, and where we have got to, you know, right, right here. 
terms of what the terms yeah. of what yeah. Do, yeah. Yeah, and even with what um, Latour seems to to be wanting to to bring into the into the current practice. I guess what I'm saying is that I read it as Latour is going back to Tard, but he he isn't really picking up Tard's methodology mm -hmm. and giving it to us in the modern time. We're left using his name. Does this make sense? We're left using natural science methodology. You end up becoming, you, you end up relying more on observation and more because you have less time to Yeah, I mean this need to just kind of lump everyone together and just kind of, you know, forget the people that lie, you know, go out outside the, I guess, the cluster. But th just two things on, on page six, it says, you know, um, individual variations are the only phenomenon worth looking at in societies for which there are comparatively few elements. And then if you link that with... Um, well, I mean, you know, and then and then you link that to page nine where he says, the scientist who is clever enough to succeed in inventing an instrument able to capture the contributions of each bacteria has produced a much more accurate picture of their aggregate. So it's the, so what he's arguing for is just, or what Tard was arguing for, was just following the, the individual so that you can get a, a better picture of the whole society, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, so, so, so my idea is, when, okay, so what you're saying is that, you still want to describe a whole society, you just want to do it in a different way, right? Yeah. Well, but this, this is what I wonder, right? This is what I wonder, right? Because, see, this is also if you go here. He says, okay, the Zeppelin is what appeals to natural scientists. Was well, basically, what, you know, when I showed this examples with this, with this, you know, this clustering, right? He basically said, well, I don't really care that, you know, you, you and me have, you know, what I care about is we belong to the same tribe because we seem to go to the same, the same places every night, right? So that's very much, natural science approach, right? You know, you said, okay, you know, all these different birds look different, but it's actually one species, right? Because they have certain traits, right? And then, okay, even though, again, I thought he's painting very big brush strokes, okay? So then, I think what he means now is that the science deals with laws and structures, right? And which is, uh, uh, you know, and then you have, you know, you have individual, so, right? In particular, concrete individuals, which are, you can say kind of examples of structures. It's also a little, almost a little platonic in a way, even though science is based on the natural method. It's also a bit idealistic because there's this kind of idea of a chair, like a structure of a chair, a model of a chair, you know, like a wireframe of a chair, and you can dress up this wireframe with different textures, right? Okay. And then he says, well, you know what? But the reason that the science had this gap, right? is simply because we didn't have the right measurement tools. Mm -hmm. That's the gap between overall structure and underlying components is the symptom of a lack of information. Mm -hmm. Elements are too numerous. We don't know where we are. You know, we have too many trajectories, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, just a second, right? Okay. Uh, so then, so, so when, so when, okay, and then, and then basically, right, this is basically what he, what he's, what, you know, what he leads next to. He says, well, physicists and biologists, you know, they kind of can be forgiven just because we don't have information about every single cell and every single atom, so we have to deal with models, but because we only have six billion humans, you know, we now, you know, we actually supposed to develop heavy tools, you know, we, we shouldn't talk about things like class, gender, uh, nationality, I mean, I think that's what he's saying, we should only talk about difference between individuals. Which is super radical, but you know, yeah. 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 Uh, two things. I mean, this this relates uh, very much to um, concepts in biology. Um, first of all, there's one key difference in biology between all animate and all inanimate objects and all their processes, and that's the genetic program. Mm -hmm. um, that's the key respect in which things that are not alive differ from those which are alive. So they're governed by natural forces and by their genetic program. Um, I'll read just one paragraph from a biologist um, arguing for the autonomy of biology from physics. And that, um, 
So the adoption of the concept of the bio population is responsible for what now seems probably the most fundamental difference between the inanimate and the living world. The inanimate world consists of Platonian classes, essences, types, with the members of each class being identical and with seeming variation being accidental and therefore irrelevant. In a bio population, by contrast, every individual is unique, while the statistical mean value of a population is an abstraction. No two of the six billion humans are the same. Populations as a whole do not differ by their essences, but only by mean statistical values. The properties of populations change from generation to generation in a gradual manner. To think of the living world as a set of forever variable populations grading into each other from generation to generation results in a concept of the world that is totally different from that of a typologist. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, obvious, it's obviously something he completely kind of ignores here, right? It's uh, Ernst Mayer. Yeah. Can, I, can I add information about this? Like the distinction between living in the environment <coughs> in the form of the crystals with aperiodic crystals and periodic crystals defines living in that matter. What in the house of what? It's, uh, the, the crystal structure is different. So aperiodic make living matter, periodic make dead matter. So you can actually put many more things in the group of the living. It's just like you have animals and plants. Um, and I see. You have everything that is actually alive. So you kind of take a crystal as a very general concept, right? It's not crystals like, you know, like particles. <coughs> no, it's the like a structure. Yeah, like structure. A structure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just wonder if we can, if we can, can we? Okay. I keep thinking that we treated the manga. I loved the, the analysis yes, 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 of the manga. Yes, yes, yes. You're, you're right. You're pretty right. Okay. We treated so it like a physical substance. So can I kind of just say okay. something about it? And, you know, I'm trying to get away from it, but I think, okay. So I think you're absolutely right. You know, partly I'm doing it because I'm just like trying to learn about these methods. Uh, and uh, I also want to say that I think it depends on at the end what you use these methods for, right? So ultimately, I mean, if you notice, I, I, I kind of, if I type in my whole PowerPoint, what we can learn about cultural variability by studying them in market pages. So, and I thought, okay, after that day, after one day, let's go to a tour. But the next part of PowerPoint is actually said, okay, let's actually now look at individual types and individual offers. So this is where I, this is where I want to go, right? Uh, because what I don't want is, I mean, basically what I want now, but the question is, now doesn't, it does not mean that I necessarily want to kind of admire the, the uniqueness of every single page, but what I want to do is I want to kind of maybe multiply the number of categories, right? So, for example, when I was talking how the style actually seems to be a continuous category and maybe better modeled as a kind of function, yes, I am using statistical and mathematical tools, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I'm using it in the service of, let's say, a different goal, right? But I can be wrong. The second thing I want to say, and again, but, but I'm also constantly have a feeling that the technology is kind of theoretically more advanced than me. It doesn't offer new ways of thinking about it. But the second thing I want to say is at least, right, if I make like, so this is my particular aggregate, right, which of course we change by changing the parameters. At least we can go in and actually look at every single individual page, right? But, uh, I mean, the point is that, you know, what would be nice, right, is to be able to actually, I mean, do these graphs in multiple dimensions, right? So you can do this graph in multiple dimensions, and then you can actually see exactly the uniqueness of every page on the multiple dimensions, but, you know, it took, it took two days to render this one image. But that would be the goal, right? So in other words, you can say that the difference between maybe what we want to do when we look at culture and maybe the sort of Latura like would like about us versus, for example, with Google or the seven, you know, people who use this technology. So you end up with this kind of cloud point, right? In multi space, and then what you do is you segment it into, into clusters, into classes. Well, in our case, maybe with this, 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 this multi-dimensional space of features and points inside it can become like a new way to think about culture, right? Mm -hmm. Because basically, you don't collapsing into classes, you said every point is its individual point. At the same time, you can see which points are close to each other, but it's basically, you stay on the level of individual points, which to me is, I think, that's what Batur kind of wants us to do. Mm -hmm. right? So, um, so I think it's true that, you know, some things I showed you, uh, you know, in fact, I've done some technical tests, but I hope that ultimately it's leading to kind of different direction. But I may be wrong, right? I may be wrong. Do you think that the representation of the node goes back to the same problematic of the network or of the graph, which is 
the representation of the node has to again be cross-referencing with what wants to read it. So if, you, if what wants to read it as a particular language, then this graph just has to be polyglot enough that it knows always what language it enters in contact with, and therefore it provides that information, whatever it is. I don't think it's one or the other. I think it's the, the node is always, it has to be agile to the skills it wants to cross-reference. So it's not about the other point of this, it's both. And, and, more. and I, I would add to that that I really think it's critical that a time dimension be added. Yes. So you yeah. said you didn't have dates, but surely no, no, you no. can find the dates of those titles. Uh, well, the, the title, what happens is that the target, but so the title, let's say the title goes over like five oh, years. Is it five years? And actually, yeah. the Wikipedia actually has it. And we tried to cross reference, but it didn't work, it did not work. But we're definitely going to be looking at evolution. I mean, guys, I. I I mean, I can show you this like, a bit tomorrow, but in fact, what we were doing last thing we were doing Mondrian, right? I specifically was trying to show you how, in fact, you can use these measurements. Yeah. So it's okay, because basically, uh, what you can say is that, I mean, this is the difference, right? So the classical statistics, the classical statistical approach would be like this. Okay, so here's my mean. So here's basically a histogram of my mean values. Okay, here's my girls and here's my boys, right? Basically, you basically summarize the data in this way. Now, of course, you can change it, you can, you can get more points, but ultimately, you know, we don't see 879 titles, individual pages, the data is summarized. Okay? Versus, and this is, you know, basically 19th to 20th century. And then only about 20 years ago, people started inventing these new techniques, which in fact allow you right, to look at uh, individual points in this, in, this amount, in, in this feature space, right, such as what we're doing here with those individual titles, right? So I actually think that, uh, you know, maybe I haven't, I haven't kind of, this is why it's not, it's not doing it. Yeah, here it is, right? So it, does, it doesn't allow me to make, right? So here it is, where in this case we can go and we can say, okay, so let's look at an individual title. Uh, let's see, okay, just for a second. Uh, right, so here's an individual title. So I think it's actually, you know, I think it's actually kind of, I mean, it seems like it's a very small step, but it actually took people 150 years to make this step, right? If I understand correctly, I'm not an expert in statistics and social science. Uh, you know, so I think there's a kind of difference, right? Uh, I, mean, I, can, I can get the scholars just so I can get the scholars out, right? Uh, but basically, so, this, so for example, if I go here, I can put this point here somewhere here, but basically appears inside of the wheel, right? It almost appears inside of some kind of category, right? It's inside the wheel. Right? Because what I'm doing, I'm kind of summarizing my values, and of course it's going to be kind of Gaussian. Whereas here, I'm actually seeing exactly where this going to be. I mean, maybe it's not like that. This is the best I can do, right? I guess it does this moment. Um, so I hope you know. And, uh, please. We, when, at, at lunch, we were talking about this, this aspect of the discussion, and we, we looked at the Paris and I, we were looking at this tree that's behind the, the cafe or the restaurant, mm -hmm. and, and comparing, doing a fluid dynamic analysis on, on that tree, and the, the complexity involved and the computational power that would be required in order to do that kind of yes. analysis, and I think there's a metaphor for, for trying to analyze groups of people or groups of cr creative uh, expressions in terms of the number of influences, the number of movements, to, and, and I think one of the enthusiasms that, that we see, like, that becomes hyperbole is to infer that, that we actually have tools that are that powerful at this point. I think in some ways it could, it could be argued that you get, a, any normal human being can look at a tree and you get a huge amount of data uh, and to, and, so, you know, from from that, and that these models are be, we're seeing pop, the potential for potential. But that, I mean, my feeling is that they, you know, even like what we have today. I mean, okay, even if we look at more advanced stuff, it's still actually very, very early yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, to basically be able, for example, to visualize all the influences of particular kind of cultural meaning, uh -huh. and we forget about it, right? But it seems so, really dangerous to in, make big inferences that have big so, society-wide effects. Based on those kind of little data slices, um, even when you have the best people that are in the field working on them and the best computers that you can bring to bear on the issues, those are huge things. And 
I think like the like the BP oil spill. That's yes. a failure of science, sure. and it's affected an entire ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And according to everyone involved, that was a safe system that made good deductions mm -hmm. based on good uh, methodologies, sure. and that has proved to be untrue. Yes, and, and and there was nothing to do they can do to fix it. Well, the same thing applies to financial market, and we discussed that right, before uh, exactly. for lunch. How exactly. you know, so I mean. And people like right, we so don't we don't know what to do about this crisis because we don't fit into the model and at least according to multiple the model was based on wrong assumptions. Right, yeah. uh, but let, let's have one more and I think I mean I know like okay, so I don't want to like deny you your your senior degree, right? Okay, so yeah. Um, I mean I can make okay. going and see if you see if wants to Well I I